Here's an interesting problem from the Romanian mathematical magazine. It asks, prove that the limit as n approaches infinity of 4 to the n over square root of n of this integral is square root of pi over e. So this may look uh, difficult at first, like the integrand is very complicated to work with. And in fact, you're not supposed to directly evaluate it and then work with it in the limit. What we're going to instead do is find the asymptotics of the integral and use one well-known method for this, Laplace's method. So first, let's, let's let i of n to be the integral part of this problem, which is the integral from 0 to 1 of square root of x squared plus 1 over e, all divided by x to the 1 over n plus 1 to the 2n dx. Now we're going to do some substitutions. So first, we're going to let x to be equal to t to the n. It's going to introduce new variable t. Differentiating this, you're going to get n t to the n minus 1. So we have n integral 0 to 1 t to the n minus 1 square root of t to the 2n plus 1 over e. all divided by t plus 1 to the 2n dt. Now I'm going to rewrite this in a way to where we get uh, an exponential showing up just like e to the ln. We're gonna rewrite this so that we have exp ln, uh, basically just taking these two parts, ignoring the square root right now. So we're going to have ln of t to the n minus 1 over t plus 1 to the 2n. And then the square root part remaining outside dt. And now I'm going to do another substitution. We're going to let u be equal to 1 minus t. So we're going to get this now in terms of u. This is going to basically flip the bounds to go from 1 to 0, and then we get a negative on the outside, but we can use the negative to flip them back to normal again. So we'll have n the integral 0 to 1. And now for this exponential part, I'm going to rewrite this in a way such that inside here, we're going to have n and then times some function f of u. This is going to be important for applying Laplace's method. So basically everything over here, we have this n, we'd like to be able to pull this out except for this minus 1. So we're going to actually extract this minus 1 outside to be part of this other function multiplied here. So we're going to get exp n ln of 1 minus u over 2 minus u squared. And then when we pull out this, this part over here, the minus, t to the minus 1, uh, we're going to have e to the minus ln of 1 minus u, and then still times the square root, which is now 1 minus u to the 2n plus 1 over e du. So now we have, now that we have the structure, we can apply Laplace's method. Now, there is a more rigorous way to, I guess, prove that this sort of thing works, but I'm going to go over here through the intuitive sense of why it works. So basically over here, so we have, we have e to the n of some function of u, which we'll call f of u. And then we also have uh, this part over here, which I'll call h sub n of u. But note that this, if we consider um, what it approaches as n goes to infinity on the interval 0 to 1, this is just going to be, um, we're going to call this h of u. This is just going to be e to the minus ln 1 minus u minus 1 half. Basically, um, this part over here is going to go to 0, and then we just have the over square root of e, which is e to the minus a half. So if we consider f of u here, you'll actually find that we have a maximum, a global maximum, 
at u is equal to zero. Basically, that's enough to balance this um, uh, numerator is big enough to where the denominator is also not larger and it's not undefined or zero or that sort of thing. So that would be at u is equal to zero. Again, you can just check this with standard calculus. Um, but anyways, if we have a maximum at u is equal to zero, then what this means is that f prime of zero, the derivative at zero, should be zero. And the second derivative, f double prime, should be less than zero, concave down, right? Uh, also, this is important here to notice this. Again, this is why I left it in the exponential here. This is also uh, greater than zero for u greater than or equal to zero. So we have these over here. Now, as, uh, as a Maclaurin series over here about zero, we can expand we can expand f of u, and I'm only going to use here for the approximation the first three terms. Uh, one of them is going to cancel to be zero, basically. We're going to have f of zero. Uh, the degree one term is zero because, again, the derivative is zero. And then we're going to have minus a half times the absolute value of f double prime of zero u squared. So again, we know, we know the second derivative has to be less than zero, so I'm just putting this in absolute values and then factoring out the negative one here. Uh, this is just going to help with later when we um, simplify this to another integral. But basically you have this, it's in the exponential, and um, cause it's a, because it's a maximum here, with the exponential, this part is going to basically contribute the most to the integral uh, and it's focused at zero and decays more quickly outside of that region as n goes to infinity. And along with that also um, the h of u itself around at zero. And again, it, we, we took the limit as n approaches infinity uh, to simplify that. And basically from this, we take these contributions so if we if we basically substitute this in, uh, which by the way again you can calculate this to see that this is going to be uh, minus ln of four minus u squared over four. Um, this still has a u term. This doesn't. We're going to have this factored out. So we're basically going to have e to the n f of zero times h of zero, and then the remainder of this uh, sort of Taylor approximation just comes from this quadratic term here. So we're going to have that i of n asymptotically equal to n times, uh, so e to the n f of 0, that's e to the minus ln of 4, h of 0 is just uh, 1 over e, so we're going to put the minus 1 half here. And then we're going to have, now normally uh, with the standard Laplace's method, um, we take this because we know its value as the as a Gaussian integral over the entire real line. But here, because we have a maximum right on the boundary of the interval of integration, which is zero, right? We go from zero to one. We're just going to do this. We're just going to go through half of it. So from zero to infinity of e to the minus n u squared over four du. So this is a standard Gaussian integral. You can just do a substitution like square root of n times u over two. Uh, the, the usual one is gonna be square root of pi over two, and this is going to simplify to where you have, so we have the n from the front, uh, the e to the minus ln of four, and then the one half here, we're just gonna simplify these as, so we have n times four to, uh, divided by four to the n over square root of e, and then the Gaussian integral is square root of pi over n. Now what we want to evaluate is of course the limit as n approaches infinity of four to the n over square root of n of this i sub n, of this i n, which is, this is going to simplify nicely. So we have limit n goes to infinity 
of 4 to the n over square root of n times n over 4 to the n square root of e times square root of pi over n. So first of all, the square root of pi is over n. You multiply these, you get n, and then this is going to cancel with this n over here. Then the 4s also cancel, 4 to the n, and we get what we want right here, the square root of pi over e. And now we are done.